what's the Sonic song where it's faster, 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 faster? Because I was gonna, I was gonna sing that, and I was gonna sing podcast, 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 podcast. It was gonna be very funny. Are you sure this isn't just a weird dream that you've come up with? No, you and only you have. No, that's not possible. It's not possible. All, all Sonic cartoon theme songs. (laughs) Jackson, we don't have nine hours. Here we go. Okay, this is the one. This is the one. One Okay, all right. One Great. Is it? I like just have to hear it. or whatever. I'm trying to remember. If it's no, it's not. This is in the Hall okay. of the Mountain King. Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> what? That's not a Sonic song. That's not Sonic affiliated. <laughs> I, I mean, unless there's some secret lore, but I mean, that's you know what there might be. Apparently, the first season of the Sonic TV show, their theme song was just da 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 da. No way. <laughs> is that? Are you allowed to do I... that? Is that? <laughs> It's more than a hundred years old. Okay, I look, we haven't true. started the podcast yet because okay, I've been sorry. holding this up with this stupid thing. <laughs> I gotta. Maybe the opening is just an extended five minute bit this time. Maybe that's yeah, just what it is. It just it starts out with uh, it probably goes something like this, and then just of this entire. <laughs> okay, whatever. There, oh, man. What the fuck is the? How I can't find it. Is the Sonic cartoon? And they, there's a song at the beginning where they say, gotta go faster, 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 faster. And, but I was, instead, I was going to say podcast, 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 podcast. Yes. That was the joke I was right. planning to do going into this okay. podcast. But apparently I've just Mandela affected myself into I, believing that that was a real song. Because I can't yeah. find it anywhere. This is, god damn it, this is No Nerds Allowed. I guess I'm Adeline <laughs> McMurray or something. <laughs> and I'm Jackson McMurray and it's Loaders Allowed. Play the goddamn theme song. I guess Sash doesn't get to say his name. No, he doesn't. It's just, it's just, I just, you know, the theme song is playing. It's just, uh, yeah. uh, <laughs> I just, uh, yeah, no. uh, uh, okay. <laughs> it's just, I 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 this week on the podcast, we have today, live in studio, Satch, whose last name I don't remember. Hi, um, I'm... Cosmonaut Tabletop, creator of that good Donald Duck video. Oh my god, you've seen Satch. the video. How, do you, how would you like to introduce yourself, Satch? Um, I, that's, that's about it, you know? Um, I, my name is Satchel Hartmod So. Uh, people call me Satch. Uh, I do the Cosmonaut Variety Hour stuff sometimes. Um... And, uh, that's, I am, I also have a YouTube channel, but, uh, I only have one video up there right now, so that's, that's all I, uh, that's all I got. <laughs> well, what, so. uh, what, an, what animal are you? What, in, in Your general? Satch the blank, what are you? Oh, oh, uh, you know what? Oh, no, this is I, the perfect example, we really... all gotta do the Google our name, the hedgehog. Right, the thing is, I don't know, I don't think there is a Satchel the hedgehog, you know what I mean? Like, Satchel's a weird name. It's but that's, like, that's it's like gonna going to make it to, all the more uh, interesting. That's true. Yeah, I guess oh if there's, there's probably only one satchel of a hedgehog that there is. <laughs> um. Oh God, she exists. I think I would be satchel the rat personally. I don't think there's enough rat representation. Um. Uh, and yeah, I am seeing sa- Sonic backpacks, but no OCs. <laughs> so okay. <laughs> All of us, all of us, just in the Discord chat, post the the first thing that comes up when you search your do you name. Want the the hedgehog. The, do you the want the first one or do you want the worst result? one? I mean, you can you can editorialize a little bit. All right, I'll give you I'll give you both if necessary. And these will just here's the first here results. <laughs> it's just a, a bag. It's just a bag. <laughs> Not even Sonic the Hedgehog related. Nope. There's Jackson the Hedgehog. All right, cool. All right. So got he's one. got a scarf. He looks like he's a really cool guy. So this is uh, maybe podcast poison because this is a very visual joke. I'll put it on Twitter. Okay, but oh. here's the first one that shows up. Like, Where not bad. That? Pretty cool. Pretty cool. That's download.gif. Yes, yeah, you gotta download it. You gotta get that virus. Uh, okay, cool. <laughs> uh, and then here's this one, which is just... Ooh. Um... <laughs> Both of these are downloads. No, I this is... I can't... I can't see this file you said you've sent me, Adeline. I don't know how that happened. I think this is like deep internet dark web. <laughs> For, forbidden Sonic. Anyway, here's my persona. Um, 
Uh, oh, it is nice! A Hell hedgehog yeah! Shaped handbag. Oh, it's, that's dope. <laughs> yeah, it's, <laughs> it's kind of okay. cool. Right. Before, for, okay, Adeline, while you're figuring out your own technical issues, how to download an image from the internet? Apparently, <laughs> yes. Jesus. Uh-huh. <laughs> Last episode, I asked you guys. I said you should leave reviews on Apple Podcasts, and we'll shout them out. We'll read them out on the air. Hell yeah. And none of you motherfuckers did it. No. So, <laughs> just, so now just you're all say, being punished. You're all being punished. I'm not reading anything. And the podcast is canceled. No, and... wait, no. <laughs> it's got here. I just got on it. This is going to turn into me being one of those streamers that goes live for yelling at their audience for not oh my God. donating Falling enough. Right. <laughs> it's only $5 audience. a month. You can <laughs> pony up. If you have time to listen to our podcast, you have time to leave a funny iTunes review. To be funny. Leave, leave funny okay. review. Uh, Satch, what is your yes. history with um, the titular hedgehog? Um, I forever borrowed a copy of Sonic 06 from my friend um, mm-hmm. because he was like, this game sucks. And I was like, I know, I want it. And so he just kind of gave it to me. Um, and that's pretty much the most I've, like, delved into Sonic the Hedgehog, is I've played a good majority of that game. Um, (laughs) uh, we were not a Sonic household, I'm sorry to say. Right. No, neither were we. We had Sonic Heroes on the GameCube, and we bought both of the Sonic Riders games, I believe. Yes. All right, dope. We but also outside had of Sonic that... and the Hidden Rings in the Secret Rings. Oh, yes. oh in the Super wait, no, you're so right. Sonic and the Secret Rings. I beat Sonic and the Secret Rings. Yeah, no, Oops. we definitely did too. That was <laughs> okay. Like, cool. I forgot one about of that our game. Few Wii games. You're right. <laughs> God, uh, like... that was the really cool one where you didn't use any buttons. You just held the controller sideways and tilted it to go. And then flailed it around when you wanted to do stuff. When that was a really exciting okay, gameplay yeah. mechanic. It also you like, fell song... into a book or something. <laughs> All I remember is like the the theme song for that was just like noise, and it was sick. You know, <laughs> <laughs> and I like that. Yeah, it was. It was yeah, called no, no, Seven like... Rings in Hand. Yeah, Seven <laughs> Rings in Hand. One in <laughs> you the would hand. Beat a level. You would be a level and just be like. <laughs> like hell yeah sonic get it i'm seven I'm and just... i think this is cool I... <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> oh that's not true i beat all what's the new sonic game where you get to make your own oc uh, uh, sonic forces sonic yeah. Force... i beat sonic forces so that's because it's a two hour long game <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay cool cool i feel like the biggest experience i relate to the sonic video game franchise is having having any number of sonic games as a kid whether that's sonic heroes or mm-hmm. uh sonic and the secret rings and playing them as a kid and thinking like wow this is like a really hard game like this is like i can't beat some of these parts because it's just really tough and then i went back as an adult and i looked at it again and i was like oh no this game is just broken. This game just doesn't work. That's yeah. why I couldn't beat it. Yeah. <laughs> was, I remember there was a certain level in the team. What was the... I don't know, do you remember the four different teams you could be in Sonic Heroes? What was well, the was, name of the one with Shadow and Rouge? I think it was Team Hero, which was Sonic, Knuckles, and Tails. <laughs> because okay. they're It's a the little self-congratulatory, guys. but all right. Mm-hmm. I, think, I don't remember the other. I think they were maybe they were just called Team Shadow. And is that was, Team Chaotix is one of them, or is that oh, like yeah, a different Team thing? Yeah, that's Team Chaotix. Team Chaotix were okay, cool. Vector Our the Alan. Alligator and yep. Espio the Chameleon and Charmy the Bee, and they yes. were like a detective agency, I think. Something like okay. that. Okay. So the thing is, all of these four teams, they had like their own like journey that you could go on, but they're all interconnected at some point. Right, right. But it, but it just kind of ended up someone sees another person from the other group and goes, hey, I'm going to follow them. And that's just how the stories are connected. <laughs> but it's fine. <laughs> no, you would fight each other sometimes, too. Yeah. Oh, okay. Like, you would fight Big the Cat because it's Big the Cat and you should take any chance you can to kill him. 
Right, that's <laughs> that's the one thing I, I I don't think I've played that game, but I remember that game because like one of the teams is just like all the side characters they didn't like at the time. It's like Big the <laughs> Cat, and I think Amy Rose is in there, and like some other person. Yeah, Cream they're like the Rabbit. Cream the Rabbit. Yeah, they're like <laughs> yeah. What, what? The very appropriately named Cream the Rabbit. I mm, I don't like that. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> <as a>, <laughs> so anyway. <laughs> Great. All right. Can we all just okay, appreciate so now that we... yep. Big the Cat? <laughs> <laughs> I know. His but... name's Big because he's big. Well, wait. Yeah, but hold on. Wait a minute. It's just Amy Rose. Yeah. It's not like that. She doesn't have a the, you know? Right. What she's is not she? Amy what... the Hedgehog. What is she? Is she she's a just hedgehog? a hedgehog? She's is a hedge. She... She's a hedgehog. A hedge, hedge person? Hed... Okay. Gotcha. I'm Googling Amy Rose right now. Yeah, what is Amy Rose? What is she? It's gonna be what like, she's she? a human. <laughs> You're like, oh. <laughs> oh my god. Oh, Actually, yeah, I was gonna bring this up for the, uh, um, for the movie. Uh, I am forever grateful, as a deep connoisseur of Sonic 06, was no romance <laughs> subplot. Um, right, that right. is good. That is, the, that is the saving grace of this film, is that yeah. I don't have okay. to watch Sonic kiss anybody. <laughs> <laughs> I can confirm Amy is a hedgehog. Okay, good, gotcha. I guess I she does kind of have spikes in some of the renders. So <laughs> I was afraid we were going to unearth something horrifying about her origins. They're going to be like, I... she was actually an elephant. And you're going to be like, okay, <laughs> all right. Excuse- <laughs> okay, I mean, I can't She's argue with dog. that, I guess. What? I mean, she looks about as much like an elephant as Sonic looks like a hedgehog. So, right, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Fair enough. <laughs> um, okay, so now that we've now that we've disclosed our Sonic history... Yes. What are your guys's Jeff Fowler's Sonic the Hedgehog experiences? Was this your first time seeing it? Yes. Also, yes. <laughs> okay, okay, cool. <laughs> I saw it right when it came out. I was there opening day because oh. I am just often there opening day for a lot of movies, but also because I wrote a review for my school newspaper of it, which is. I think my favorite review that I've written, and it's going to be hard for me not to just quote it, quote, yeah, quote my own review (laughs) on this podcast, but um, my big take in that review uh, were twofold. The first Mm -hmm. was that this is absolutely in no way a Sonic movie. Yep, yep, yep. This movie doesn't have anything to do with the character or game or generalized idea of sonic you could take the plot and replace him with a smurf and it would be the same movie and also they should have just left him ugly right like (laughs) i i don't agree with that you don't think think so here's my thing i want the release of the movie where he is ugly like i want to get the comparison but i am glad they fixed it (laughs) <laughs> I yeah, I'm very glad I don't have to watch that version of Sonic the Hedgehog. Here's what I think. Okay. I think going off of the role model of cats, which mm-hmm. instantly became a cult classic, which That's, you know what? Yeah. Barring coronavirus, people were setting up midnight screenings of cats <laughs> as early as like months after the film originally came out. People <laughs> immediately decided they were all in on cats and they were going to just love it forever, right? Right. I feel like that was a boat that Sonic the Hedgehog absolutely missed. They took him and they fixed him, and now the movie's just fine. Yeah. And I don't think anyone's going to be talking about it 12 months from now, you know? <laughs> yeah, they don't have, like, it doesn't grab your attention. If Sonic looked right. weird, we would all be like, haha, look how weird Sonic is. Oh my god, is. you're right. But because yeah, yeah. they sacrificed just... it. They yeah. sacrificed, exactly. like, longevity for ratings. Because it's gonna, it's gonna, you know, it it did well. You know, as heralded it did as one of the best movie. video yeah. game movies. Which is, you know, kind of like being lord of, like, the some bad donuts? analogy donuts you know lord of the donuts there we yeah, go that's uh-huh. our reference <laughs> um i want to counter of how many times they say lord of the donuts in this movie because i feel like it's over a hundred right <laughs> okay so it's got a, I, I really quick i want to point out some of the posters from this movie okay. um like most blockbusters there were uh sort of character posters right yeah um 
but there are not yeah, a lot of the characters one where you in can, this movie. Where it's the crotch shot from Sonic's view, or <laughs> no, no, I'm not talking about that. That's a whole <laughs> okay, other cool. can of worms. This gotcha. is just a funny little bit because they had a poster with Sonic the Hedgehog on it that said Sonic. They had a picture or a poster with Doctor Robotnik on it that said Robotnik. And they had one with James Marsden on it that said Donut Lord. And they had <laughs> one with Tika Sumter on it that said Maddie. Wow. <laughs> Which I think is hilarious. Oh my Not God. even Pretzel Lady. Just... Not even, no, it's just nope. Maddie. <laughs> she deserved better in this movie, can I just say? <laughs> no, for sure. Was there something you were saying, Satch, about something else that I interrupted you? Um... Let's see. So we went over the we went over the crotch shot. Uh, that's oh um, yeah. <laughs> uh, I mean those those initial like teasers were just like insane. Um, oh, yeah. Uh, but I don't I don't know. I almost kind of want to go back to the point where it's like this movie could have been anything, and I think you're absolutely correct. <laughs> right. Um, because it's not a, It's not like they they. They didn't go, like, the Castlevania route, where it's like, okay, so here's the established world, you know, we're gonna build off of that, we're gonna do it. It's right. just like, alright, so, uh, buddy cop, and then, um, we could CGI anything in there, right? So, <laughs> why not Sonic, <laughs> right? Alright, cool. No, yeah, it's this old, tired plot structure that people use for these kinds of movies. It's exactly, it's the E.T. structure, right? Yeah. Yeah. They do the oh, same thing sure. in Bumblebee. They do the same thing in the Smurfs movie. Like, you take this character that already exists in this fictional world, and then you're just like, what if they came to Earth, and then the government wanted to get him, but he has to make a friend so he can get away from the bad guy who is in the military? Uh-huh. And you're like, okay, it's fine, I guess. Like, no, what's I, even I, I weirder that's... is that they're obviously trying to pull an E.T., but the thing about E.T. is that he's the ugliest motherfucker on the planet, and I hate him. Okay. So they sh- that's another reason why they should have kept Sonic ugly. Yeah. Because... You're saying James Marsden should have also been horrified by Sonic. Yeah, You know because... what? He, he was. Maybe they But drove... he shouldn't have been. <laughs> <laughs> he, he doesn't know how good he has it. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, okay. okay. And I feel like this is a great time to talk about the Sonic the Hedgehog controversy because we are reporting to you live on the the day after they announced that the Snyder Cut of Justice League is indeed oh coming God. to HBO Max. Um, it's a five hour <laughs> mini series. Five hour Snyder Cut. Yeah, it's, it's it's not even like finished apparently. Like it's just yeah. like no, they people just begged for it, it enough that they're like, all right, we'll make a full movie, I guess. But well, it's gonna be thing. three movies in one. <laughs> Not to just not to just talk about the Snyder Cut for a while, because I wanted to okay, use it as a stepping stone to something else, but it right, needs okay. to be addressed, I feel like. <laughs> mm-hmm. Because what they're we are doing... We in a post-Snyder Cut world, and yeah. that's yeah. just a thing we need <laughs> to understand. Exactly. Because um, they're not just releasing the, like, janky, half-finished, mostly storyboard, green screen footage stuff. They're, like, mm-hmm. sinking money into it. They're like, we're yeah. doing the special effects, we're doing a new score... We're putting yeah, like it all together in, like, a really nice, shiny package for you to make it feel like a real movie, which I think is genius. But, um, anyway, whatever. It doesn't matter. It's not what I want to talk about. Yeah. Because it's all about, like, this movement of, like, fans, quote-unquote, of, like, the people that this movie is supposedly for being upset that something wasn't their way and just telling the people who made it to change it, right? It's what Mm. we saw with Last Jedi and Rise of Skywalker. It's what we saw with the Snyder Cut in its own different weird kind of way. It's what we saw with um, uh, Game of Thrones for a really long time. Remember that petition where they were like, you should just remake the eighth season of Game of Thrones. Just pretend like the one you made didn't happen and just do it again, but different. That was the worst. Um (laughs) Can you just cater to my needs? Thanks. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. You and owe this me, is... as the person who has done nothing and gives you nothing, to make a thing right. that I like. <laughs> right. And, like, this is, like, a perfect example of that. Because they came out with the Sonic trailer and everybody hated it. Mm-hmm. And so they were just like, okay, that's fine. Uh, we'll just change it. Like, you know, we'll delay the movie by a few months, but uh, it's, like, 
you guys are in charge. We'll just, we'll change it. We'll make it yeah. more like what you want, you know? And like, it's, it's weird. It's a constant weird feeling I have about this because yeah. there's always a different story for each particular thing, you know? Like, to me, the story of Last Jedi and Rise of Skywalker is sort of the worst of it. Because the thing about oh, Last Jedi was that it was divisive, right? It wasn't mm -hmm. just a disaster. It was something that some people really responded to and some people really hated. And the people who really hated it didn't have the capacity to understand that anybody else felt any differently, right? They couldn't right. just let somebody else have something they didn't like. They had to make it their way, which is different from Sonic the Hedgehog, I think, because Sonic the Hedgehog, nobody liked it. Like, yeah. <laughs> it was like a unilateral, like, no, 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 no. We can't be doing this. <laughs> like, right. This is, right. This is not an appropriate response to the Sonic, the, the, this idea, you know? Yeah. <laughs> and, you can't do Sonic dirty like this. <laughs> and it's weird because the movie comes out better for it. I mean, it depends on how you think of better. I don't think sure. it's better. But, you know, in terms of the public reception, it's definitely... In terms of pure visuals and what yeah. I have to look at at screen. Yeah. Right. Um, and I think it's just, it's a really interesting thing that just keeps happening over and over and over again. And I'm fascinated and terrified to see how it takes shape over the next few years of people making movies yeah because i mean hmm, i'm trying to try to think but because like at, at first when they responded and they're like all right well um so i guess everybody hated that so <laughs> we're gonna try our best to fix it um at first it's like all right cool so you know they're um they are listening to what you know the public is kind of um, you know, thinking and, and, and it's, it's, you know, it's all good on that, on that front. Um, mm -hmm. and then you sort of have, you sort of like step back and it's like, uh, well, you know, it's the, it's the, the animators are kind of getting punished for that one. Right. Um, mm -hmm. Like I, I, you know, I'm sure they got paid for the work they did. I don't think they got paid extra for doing extra work, you know? Yeah. Well, um, that's the thing. I was, suck. I was looking at this today. Apparently, mm. this is one of those weird things that, like, everybody is, you know, concerned about animators and, like, worried about, like, industry crunch and all that kind of stuff. But when I was doing just a brief little bit of research on this movie, apparently the Sonic the Hedgehog, like, reanimation station was, like, mm -hmm. very well organized and people didn't really have to crunch and it was pretty chill. Oh, good. Which tells uh, me that they <laughs> definitely, definitely plan to do that. Yeah, I, don't I feel know. like if That's... it was an actual, we oh crap, we screwed up, we need to fix and change everything. I feel like it would have been a crunch, and people would have gotten left in the dust. Like, I'm, I'm, yeah, this was totally right. planned to but get what media if, coverage. What if they, um, what if they revise stuff and they they come back and they're like, all right, here's the final product. We're not changing anything else, and it's like intensely worse. <laughs> um, right. They're like, we did it, we changed it. Like, <laughs> you got oh. it, boys. <laughs> Well, that's the thing. That's what they did with Rise of Skywalker, right? I mean, that's everybody true. everybody hated Last Jedi. Not everybody. I half love of... Last Jedi, and Rise yeah. of Skywalker is a pile of crap. <laughs> Adeline I and I, I don't know how see. you feel, Satch, but Adeline and I are staunch Last Jedi defenders. I, um, I liked Last Jedi, and then I didn't even see the, the last one. Yeah, I, I still haven't seen Rise of Skywalker. Because, because I just it's not based on anything. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I just kept seeing, like, Palpatine come up, and I was like, they can't do Palpatine again. I was like, I'm not watching Palpatine again. That's the third time I've seen Palpatine it's do his big bad stuff. oh my god. I'm not to talk about Rise of Skywalker again <laughs> for, like, the 200th time. But literally, so we end, we end the, the, we end the last movie, and Ray, and Ray and Kylo are like, we have to destroy the old ways. Like, they're old and corrupt. And, mm -hmm. like, Ray's like, no, I still believe in good. You're right that things are bad, but we need to save the good. And right, and then Kylo is like, well, I think a neutrality is better because both ways are totally corrupt, so I'm going to destroy both things. And it's, like, this really, like, they're talking about, like, the evil of neutrality and, like, not picking a side and stuff like that. And then, literally, the opening crawl of Rise of Skywalker is 
Palpatine has been on a planet this whole time, and, Ky- and Kylo Ren is going there now. And it's like, oh, oh my god. god. You didn't it's like, hey watch guys, the last you... movie. <laughs> you remember how things were morally gray for a bit? Let's bring back the personification of evil so that we yeah. can all just kind of <laughs> chill right. out and watch some, like, cool swords fight each yeah, other. Yeah, so we don't have to yeah. think about, like, anything or, like, have any conversations about politics. We could just, like... <laughs> Look at Ray and uh she's got yeah. a red lightsaber. That's spooky. What's up with Ooh. that? <laughs> but yeah, so it it just goes to show that like p- fans on the internet mm-hmm. are not d- right. professional screenwriters right. or creatives in any particular way. And if we yeah. always give them what they think they want, everything's going to be the worse for it for the most part. At least I think. I think because... there are ways to effectively and productively engage and listen to your audience and, like, kind of, right. like, keep mm-hmm. on, like, what people, like, actually want to see. And I also think there's really destructive and, like, art-destroying ways to do that also. Like, mm-hmm. I mean, it, it was a huge problem with Steven Universe while Steven Universe was running, where if somebody didn't like something, like, artists on Twitter would get, like, death threats because, like, oh, characters God, yeah. didn't do things that they wanted them to do. And it's like, that's right. not... Mm-hmm productive oh, yeah. no i was anybody. on tumblr during that era so yeah I... exactly <laughs> like oh, there's man. like I, I think it also goes with like only listening to a portion of your audience i think is inherently not to say problematic but problematic like <laughs> the whole thing with uh, rise of skywalkers the people that were complaining about last jedi were like neckbeard white men who were upset that ray even existed and so right. to only listen to that portion of the audience and only do what they want is kind of a finger to everybody who liked what you were doing. And it just seems, it's just, it's icky and I don't like it. Right. Well, because, yeah, but... Go ahead, Satch. Oh, okay, sorry. I was, I was just saying, like, because, you know, like, how it usually goes, uh, that portion, the um, the white men of the audience are the loudest. Um, <laughs> right. Uh, and so if you thought, like, you know, you thought, like, The uh, Last Jedi was like, oh, you know what? That was pretty decent. I'm not going to go and write a Twitter t- tirade about how that was decent, but somebody yeah. that hated it is going to write a Twitter <laughs> right. tirade about how they hated it. Yeah. Yeah. So. I should start writing more tirades about when I find things decent. When I like oh something. Oh, my God. I'm going I'm to start going on mediocre rants so <laughs> yeah. often. I thought it was pretty okay when. <laughs> <laughs> Have you guys fucking seen Trolls 1? It's because- a goddamn reasonable movie <laughs> it functions narratively and i had a pretty good time about it i like the aesthetic <laughs> choices that they made and they <laughs> stick to them <laughs> um do you want to see um i'm just looking at amy rose's wikipedia page still okay okay cool. do you want to hear you there is a list of things that she likes do you want to hear what they are is it is sonic? sonic one of them number one sonic yep, all right maybe, cool maybe. there we all go right. D- number two mysterious things number three fortune telling number four soft serve ice cream (laughs) okay so okay no (laughs) that has told me one thing is that amy rose should date silver because he's all of those things that's true he is soft serve (laughs) ice cream (laughs) and mysterious (laughs) 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 oh fuck okay she's got dislikes too okay are you ready for this yeah 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 Okay, okay. One, boring things. Yep. <laughs> Great. Yeah. Two, getting kidnapped. <laughs> no, most people are generally dislikeful yeah, you know. of that. <laughs> um, there's a few other, they all involve Sonic being mean to her, but... <laughs> the last two are both great. Uh, people thinking Sonic has turned evil or done something wrong, or the thought of Sonic turning evil. <laughs> Huh. Uh, Amy, you gotta get out of this relationship, hon. It's not... You got... It's not good. Oh, no. Amy, you know what Amy is? Amy is like a Steven Universe stan on Tumblr. Yeah. It's oh, the, no. thought of, the thought of Sonic doing anything Sonic wrong if she starts not sending evil. death threats. <laughs> He's the not way that they mischaracterize to... him in this episode is <laughs> apprehensible. <laughs> 
I want the Amy Rose review of the Sonic the Hedgehog movie and be like, it should have been more Sonic, I think. This is what I'm, like, thinking. I am fascinated by the layout of this Wikipedia page. What other Sonic characters should I look up their likes and dislikes? Um, Do Rouge. Okay, let's see. Rouge Rouge the the Bat. bat. Oh, my God. I feel like I have to go on this journey with you. (laughs) Oh, if I just... Okay. Don't go where I can't go. (laughs) Okay. Here's what Rouge the Bat likes. Jewelry, treasure, okay. flirting, and getting what she wants. <laughs> oh, no! Yeah, hell yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, dislikes. Anyone taking gems from her. All right. Fake jewelry. Hmm. People insulting her. And admitting when she is wrong. <laughs> <laughs> all right this, i i love this i, know I, all of I, this. I like how these are formatted because it's just here's what they like and then the dislikes are <laughs> things that are not the likes you things know what i mean the so she likes jewelry likes. she doesn't like not having it great <laughs> <Right. laughs> to know thank goodness you told me that okay let's see what charmy b likes and dis- dislikes oh god i was really hoping <laughs> okay <laughs> charmy likes Honey flowers, playing, flowers, nectar, playing video games, <laughs> so the just beach, to play. and Sonic the Hedgehog. <laughs> God, they were like, all right, this dude's been in three things total. Let's One of go. them was an out of can of comic. What can we do? He's four years old. Let's go. He's a bee. He's, he's a bee. <laughs> he's four years old. He stood he next really to formed? Sonic that one time. <laughs> I have seen him in a picture with Sonic the Hedgehog. There we go. There's another one. He likes he dislikes Sonic. <laughs> he dislikes boredom okay. and being tricked and Dr. Eggman. <laughs> okay. And uh, the bad guy. I wonder uh, yeah, what Dr. But Eggman's on. likes and dislikes e- are. Wait, well, no, no, no. Amy didn't have be- that he hated Dr. Eggman. That's true. She's fine with Dr. She befriends all those robots. Yeah, see, I'm really concerned about the fact that Amy hasn't come forward as anti-Eggman yet. Yeah, Yeah. I don't know. She hasn't changed her profile picture to the anti-Eggman icon, so I don't think (laughs) we can trust her. Her silence (laughs) speaks volumes on the whole Eggman (laughs) issue. Okay, (laughs) this is the last one for Dr. Ivo Robotnik. Cool. Um, Likes Chaos Emeralds. Yeah. uh Robots. Yeah. Conquering the world, Eggs? his plans succeeding, and his empire. All right. Dislikes huh. Sonic the Hedgehog. All right. Lo- losing okay. when his plans fail, his mustache being ruined, and his robots being incompetent. I wanted his dislikes to just be a list of every single Sonic character that has and <laughs> exist. Oh dislikes Sonic the Hedgehog, Amy the Hedgehog. Shadow the Hedgehog, Silver the Hedgehog, all the Hedgehogs. All the Hedgehogs. Oh my god. Tails the Hedgehog. Wait a minute. Hold on a second. Oh. Now I know that's different. <laughs> He's a Oh, uh, you know what I would write if I got to write like a Sonic the Hedgehog comic book? What would What's you like? write? I would write the alternate universe in which Tails was a Hedgehog and Sonic was a fox. Damn. Wow. And Shadow was a bat and Rouge was a Hedgehog. Okay, but does Sonic get the um the the gyro tails still, or is he just the normal fox in this universe? And does tails have like spinning quills or something? Well, I don't want to give it away. I don't want to yeah. spoil okay, you're the right. story. I'm sorry. But what I will say, okay, I'll say this. Mm-hmm. I think you'll be surprised. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, good. Right. So anyway, Sonic the Hedgehog the movie. Um, <laughs> okay. So, yes, yes. All right. The, like, like, general attitude about this movie, which I think is sort of ridiculous, has pretty much been, it's pretty good. To which yeah. I respond, no. like, compared to what? Scoob. <laughs> like, <laughs> in, what, in what way could it have been much worse? You know, like... It's to me, it's a just, line. Been much worse in a lot of other ways. <laughs> it could have been. Well, that's like step one. It's not a Sonic movie. We've already discussed mm-hmm. this. It's just mm-hmm. a, a, a kid adventure blockbuster, whatever. But mm-hmm. the, 
Sonic also, isn't even Sonic. Like, Sonic has a very specific personality that's, like, very much, like, 90s influence, which is, like, so in right mm-hmm. now. And I don't know why they didn't do stuff with that. Like, are you kidding me? You could have crammed this thing to the brim with 90s nostalgia, and it, like, would have made sense, and they didn't do that. And it's, like... He didn't even grind on wa- rails? Unbelievable. I know. He said chili dogs one time. He's not my cool skateboarding bad boyfriend from the 90s. He's just some, like, kid, <laughs> and I hate him. Like, it's not... That's not Sonic. I don't know who this is. I don't like him. He keeps right. ruining this very nice couple's, like, whole life, and I'm oh kind of angry at him about it. <laughs> and he's, yeah, yeah, he's not extreme enough. He needs no. to be much more extreme. He needs to be extreme. Yeah. <laughs> and can I just say, I mean, I I can't remember who the actor is now, but I remember liking him in other things. Didn't do the Sonic voice. No. Oh, you Ben know? Schwartz. I have ben a Schwartz. huge take about this. Okay. Because I find Ben Schwartz to be one of the most talented, most funny improv comedians alive today. Yeah. He is a spectacularly gifted comedian. And in this movie, he is saying lines like, didn't see that coming. And like, like, oh, that's gotta hurt. (laughs) You're like, okay. Ben. like, like, he's doing the floss. And he's flossing twice. And like it's just i don't know because clearly he's just in a voice booth right he's yeah. not having any opportunity to interact with other actors and like riff or come up with things on the day in any capacity mm-hmm. and as a result he's stuck with what is presumably a medium funny medium annoying script yeah <laughs> yeah he just has to kind of do his best with because they, he has to say those exact lines. Yeah. Otherwise, the people on set three weeks from now are, are going to have to have a hard time figuring out how they're going to change everything based on what he actually said that day. Because on the you flip know? side, you have Jimmy, 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 Jim Carrey. Jimmy. Jimmy Carrey. <laughs> Jimmy Carrey. Jimmy Carrey. James as, as, as we call him in the biz, you know. Jimothy Carrey just acting his <laughs> ass off, just like doing an amazing job, being like the saving grace of this movie, being oh, hilarious. Yeah. And I feel like it's absolutely because it was Jim Carrey, and they didn't feel like they had to hand him a whole script. Like, they definitely, like, <laughs> had lines and stuff, but the rest of the time, I think it's just Jim Carrey thinking of funny Jim Carrey things to say. And that's why it works, and that's why he's likable, and that's why he's the only mm-hmm. good part of this movie. Versus Ben <laughs> that's Schwartz, why I don't... who was just, like, handed an essay to read by himself in a room <laughs> where no one talked to him, and just been be like, yeah. make it funny. Right. And, and that's why, like, I can deal with, you know, Jim Carrey being, like, a different version of Eggman, you know? Like, yeah. he doesn't, uh, he is, you know, he's, like, he's quirky, and he, uh, but he doesn't do, like, the classic sort of, like, Eggman kind of, like, gravelly tones, you know? Right. Um, uh, but, like, it's like, alright, cool, that's Jim Carrey, he's having fun, and that's my new Eggman, you know? Mm-hmm. Like, that's, right. that makes sense. Um, whereas Ben Schwartz, uh, God rest his soul, for he is now dead. Um, yep. <laughs> uh, um... <laughs> Upon the release of this movie. Um, and he, I mean, he's just, like, you know, he's just, he just has to be Sonic, you know? Because, yeah, like, right. the license holders just hold, like, a iron grip over that. Um, and so, you know, like, you kind of expect, like, oh, but, you know, where's the, where's the, the cool attitude? Where's you know, the where's flavor? the spice? Right, why is he the grinding on rails? It yeah, really right. must have been, I think they were afraid they had of the changing... To get him I would say they were afraid of changing Sonic's character, but they did change his character, but they weirdly made it the most vanilla, boring thing ever. Like, I feel like they were scared to, like, make a Sonic that the audience wouldn't like, so they just made him as, like, basic and palatable as possible. But, like, mm. that ain't Sonic. Sonic is extreme. He's full of spice. He's eating chili and, dogs. Like, Yeah, and he's cool. He doesn't make fart jokes. He doesn't <laughs> talk about maybe he shit himself after eating a chili dog. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Okay, okay. I'm so sorry. Right. I know we moved on from this bit a while ago. All right. But I need, I need to read you Shadow the Hedgehog's like and dislikes. Oh, my God. All right. Okay. No, please do. Likes. Number one, nothing. Cool. <laughs> what? <laughs> Number two, justice. So, now, hold on. So, not going against so the So, not first one. nothing. Unless and, there's a nothing the hedgehog okay. I'm not aware of. And the three final things on this list 
are Terminator, Arnold Schwarzenegger, and Hot Pockets. <laughs> what? what? <laughs> Terminator, Arnold Schwarzenegger, and Hot Pockets. Just put Shadow the, the Hedgehog likes nothing and Hot Pockets. <laughs> I, I, and, man, I, I don't know how to process that. <laughs> They the also file. have his age listed as 50 plus. That's not true. <laughs> yeah. No, I I mean he is like some he's like variously like some genetic clone or a government experiment. But he's a or... genetic clone of Sonic and Sonic's like 15, I think. Okay, let's see how Wait, how, how, how old Sonic, Sonic is. Hold on a because second. I just saw this thing cuz like Amy's like 12 and Sonic's like either like 15 or 13. Yeah, Sonic is 15, according to the Wikipedia. Yeah. And Shadow, his arch nemesis, is an <laughs> old <laughs> ass man. A clone of himself. It's yeah, 50 it's plus. Old. It's <laughs> much older. How do you make a clone <laughs> older than the person you're cloning? How Maybe the fuck does faster. that make sense? <laughs> oh, God. I really hope you guys are ready for the sequel where they do release Shadow the Hedgehog oh because it's coming and I know it is. It's no yeah. Th- okay, here's they the brought thing. out Tails. Shadow's on its way. Here's the thing about the stupid Tails thing at the end. First of all, okay. it doesn't make any goddamn sense why Tails is here <laughs> because we have, yeah. we've established that Sonic has no friends and has never <laughs> had a friend. Yeah, <laughs> right. And even if they were friends, they were friends when they were like five and only now... Ten years later, is Tails even looking for him? So pretty cool friend. And second yep. of all, what would have made that scene dope is if the portal opens and just the whole ass Sonic crew walked out. Like if it was like Knuckles oh and God. Tails and Amy and Shadow and Rouge or whatever. Like if it was everybody, I'd be like, oh holy shit! And the they, whole and they walked here. up to Sonic and they're like. This is it, the Infinity War. Yeah, exactly. And, then the and they movie looked ended. in the camera and they gave me a wink. I would love that. But because I wouldn't ask any questions, I would just be like, all right. Yeah. But when Tails shows up, I'm like, hold on a second, Tails. Why the fuck are you here? And they where all show did you up and they're like, from? Sonic, we need you to join the Resistance. And then it's, and then it's uh, Sonic Forces. Yeah. <laughs> where and Sonic I feel dies. like this movie does have a problem that a lot of these kinds of movies have. I think Deadpool is a good example where it's like, oh, it's based on this property, but we want to like really make sure that we're like, I don't know, having our own take on it, I guess is the best way to think about it. We're doing our own thing with it, yeah. And then, you know, once they get to like the sequel, maybe that's when you start to incorporate all the things that you kind of expect from it, right? Yeah, right. I think that's You put in all like the inside characters that people would know if they followed it. Because in Deadpool... There's basically no Marvel characters in it besides just Deadpool. And they, like, made up their own conflict and did this whole thing. Yes, and that right. works in Deadpool well enough because that movie works as a whole. And I'm not upset about the fact that they didn't. And then Deadpool 2, they're like, okay, and then here's Cable and here's Domino and all right. these guys that you were yeah. kind of expecting to be in the first one. Um, they do that They do that with a lot of different things. I can't think of any other examples off the top of my head. But, but this movie, it doesn't work because you... It's not satisfying as it is on its own, you know? Yeah. And it's like, oh, and now at the very end, now we have Dr. Robotnik looking like Dr. Eggman, and yeah. now we have Tails showing up, and it's like, okay, well, a little too, little too late there. Yeah, it just makes I'm you feel like, yeah, it's like, it's like, oh, that. okay, it's a Sonic. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. No, you're good. It just makes me feel like you should have been doing that the whole time. You're basically telling <laughs> right. me you could have been doing this the whole time and you chose not to. Right. right. <laughs> it's like, this is a Sonic movie now. Oh, great. And it's over. Cool. Oh, cool. <laughs> Look at my wrist. Right, yeah. Oh, it's over. Um, as far as Sonic goes in the way that he looks in this world now that they've fixed him, quote unquote, they uh-huh. fixed him. Made him look all cute and not disgusting to look at, like cowards. They made him marketable. Um, Absolutely. <laughs> he's still, I think visually he works fairly well. Except yeah. when that one shot where he's like getting in a fight in a bar- biker bar, which that, <laughs> the, 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 the whole thing of that aside, it's just, they have that scene where he like walks up to that guy and it's like his hand with a beer bottle and he's like hitting the guy with the beer bottle and it, may, and it mm. looks 
the worst. It's just so bad. It's like, oh, there's an animated thing, and he's next to a real person, and it looks so bad. Like, stop putting Sonic next to people. It, don't, it doesn't look good. <laughs> oh, I didn't notice that. That's crazy. It's bad. Oh, no. Um, <laughs> no. <laughs> Super quick. Really quick. I'm no. sorry. I swear to God I'm going to close this Wikipedia page. No, I think, it, I think it speaks volumes that, like, our best, <laughs> like, talk our best talks about like the sonic the hedgehog movie is like let's do something else yeah. you know because <laughs> i watched the movie with my mom and i feel like that was uh you know because we're all home for quarantine and stuff like that right. and yeah. so uh halfway through i think that's what she said too um and uh kind of just left and <laughs> so, i think so that's a pretty good they didn't even make it marketable because your mom didn't want to watch it <laughs> like that's well, who they're I, trying to I, get I to watch argue. the sonic movie is people's moms Right. <laughs> okay, I have something I want to say All on right, that line, okay. but first I just want to say that Sonic dislikes the word slow. Just, um, just the concept of not being fast yeah. is upsetting to him. Uh, anyway, no, but okay. I think the, the marketing for this movie is really interesting to me because they were very careful to make sure everybody going around doing interviews said the words like, this movie is for the fans. Like, as much as they possibly could, right? Mm-hmm. Yep. Because they know, they just know that if people don't like it, that's going to be the line of rhetoric they use. Like, they don't understand the fans or whatever. Yeah. And, but the thing about it is that it does not feel like it's for the fans no. at all. It feels like it's developed to appeal to the broadest possible audience who have no clue who Sonic the Hedgehog is and don't really give a shit about what he should be, you know? Yeah. yeah. And yeah. I think it's it's interesting that, like, clearly the studio is trying to, like, have it both ways, you know? Yeah. And, like, somehow they succeeded? Like, I don't understand why, like, Sonic fans embraced this movie as much as they did, you know? Mm-hmm. Just Because, like, every once in a while they kind of th- threw him a bone, you know? So, like, yeah. hey, look. This place is called Green Hill. That's like a Sonic thing. <laughs> right, like, yeah. Sonic? Go, fetch! <laughs> <laughs> they had Junkie XL use the Green Hill Zone theme for like a second in the last oh, scene. Oh, yeah. I was like, I was, I was like, oh, this kind of is, that's, that's kind of cool. And then it was just only for that, like, and little bit. Yeah. And then they were done. Because, yeah, yeah. so, like, there's this, there's this whole world of Sonic video games, of Sonic mm-hmm. comic books, of Sonic television shows, of Sonic music that paints this world in a really specific way, right? Mm-hmm. right? And you don't have to do an adaptation or a sequel or anything like that of a particular thing But, like, there is a certain way that Sonic is, pretty much always. He's got his gaggle of friends. Mm -hmm. Dr. Robotnik is trying to, like, turn animals into robots or whatever. And it's all gonna suffer for pollution. Yeah, and you've got to, like, run around, and there's, like, all these different animal friends, and they take place in this very specific world, you know? Mm -hmm. And then this movie is like, this is for the fans. It's about um, if Sonic the Hedgehog met um, actor and model James Marsden and they drove in a car. Who's trying to do a Paul Rudd impression so hard yeah. and it's just, <laughs> yeah. it just makes you wish that Paul Rudd was there, but he's not. Oh my god, yeah, you're so right. Yeah. I like James he's... Marsden in this movie, though. He's I feel great, like, but like I'm, I'm ready for him to have a comeback. Rudd. He oh, played man. Cyclops in the original X-Men, remember that? I don't when he had the bad hair, that was good stuff. Anyway. I, I mean, I have seen the original X Men. I might have forgotten. <laughs> he, he does wear the mask. You can't blame me at right, all for yeah. that one. But like, um, just you gotta admit, this whole role was just like absolutely written for Paul Rudd. And when Paul Rudd wisely said no, then <laughs> they were like, "Well, let's get somebody to pretend to be Paul Rudd for two hours." I really think. That if they hadn't gotten Jim Carrey in this picture, it would be a bad. I, it would be a bad film. Oh yeah, no. Well, I mean, it would, it would be worse, obviously. Mm-hmm. But also, I think it absolutely would have just flopped. Oh yeah. Because not only is this like Jim Carrey's like family blockbuster comeback, you know, mm-hmm. which I think is a really smart move for him. Um, 
and people wanted to see him in this kind of movie and that name alone like drew people in really really strongly oh, oh yeah um, even when the thing looked bad people were like but but i do kind of want to see jim carrey be goofy again it's been yeah. like yeah. six or seven so years bad. since he got to do that yeah mm-hmm. um and I think if it, if we didn't have that appeal, I think this movie would absolutely be every, like, Dragon Ball Z movie. Or, like, just every time you think, like, oh, they're going to make, like, a... A Mario movie. Like oh a... God. What's the Mr. Peabody and Sherman movie? Like, oh, okay, yeah. I guess. <laughs> like, maybe if you're a kid, you'll tell your parents you want to see that. But, like, oh, I don't think quick, anybody's going to give a shit about quick, this. Is there a Dragon Ball Z movie? Yeah, it was a live action Dragon Ball Z movie that's famously bad from like 2010. I've never oh, it's heard incredible. of that. <laughs> it's also like has nothing to do with Dragon Ball Z. It's that's actually true. a very similar movie if you think about it. <laughs> you know? Right, yeah. And the fact that it's just, hey, what if Dragon Ball Z was like was like cool and like hip and also in in now times. <laughs> um and didn't have anything to do with it. Is there a government agent who's trying to track down Goku? Uh I don't think so. It's is the government bit. trying to get the balls? Uh, no, I don't. You know what? I think that is where they 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 don't uh, they uh, don't follow the formula. There is no government <laughs> agent. I don't think. I think it is just like, but I think it is just some generic dude. I don't think. But it's it like, like takes up, place in the real world. I be- I'm almost positive it does. Yeah, I could be wrong, but like I think the dude is just like Goku is just like a dude. He's like John Goku or something. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> David Goku. <laughs> John he's like an american goku. like hey it's me goku and it's like hold on no <laughs> no it's my name's not. nathan nathan it's... goku <laughs> yeah it's my much. dad's a cop <laughs> <laughs> oh man <laughs> Good. i gotta say i think my favorite part of this movie is the several times where they look straight into the camera and say we'll find a new apartment on zillow or oh my God. they look into so, the yeah. camera and say, my favorite restaurant is Olive Garden. <laughs> like, <laughs> you should try their never-ending salad bowls or whatever it was, you know? Like, <laughs> what, why are there... Okay, like, one, like, the Power Rangers did this too. Like, one brand deal that, like, kind of, like, incorporates into the movie is kind of like a joke. with Because with Power Rangers, it's like the secret thing, like, being underneath the Krispy Kreme. Like, that's funny. I like that. And this one, like, the recurring joke of Olive Garden, where the government gives them a coupon to Olive Garden. Like, that's hilarious. But, like, you can only do that once. And any more times, yeah. I just think I'm watching propaganda. Like, <laughs> I, that, that okay. Zillow caught me so off guard. Uh, <laughs> like, what the hell was that? You know, yeah, no. She says, like, it's like a totally regular scene, and they're like, oh, you know, we're thinking about moving to San Francisco. And look at this, I even checked out an apartment on Zillow. And there's just an insert of a laptop that's open with Zillow on it, with the logo prominently placed for, like, a full two seconds with no dialogue over it. You know what? (laughs) You're just like, oh, okay. (laughs) This is embarrassing. Um, I didn't notice the product placement uh, until, like, later when I was like, nobody talks about Zillow. (laughs) <laughs> my mom brought it up she's like that's a lot of product placements in this and i was like yeah. where and then, <laughs> just, <laughs> where show me <laughs> where i don't see any don't you dare don't you dare slander sonic like, like that you are not a, you would not sell out, sell out. <laughs> <laughs> oh man it's um just, it's I, just it's just creepy i don't like it it's icky <laughs> <laughs> i don't want zillow in my movie in my sonic <laughs> in movie? my sonic uh-uh. Also, I, I hate how Sonic ruins this man's life, and I'm just supposed to be, like, cool with it. Like, right! He should have gone to San Francisco! This guy, first of all, they're in this nice-ass house in Green Hills. This is, like, the nicest house. It's, like, a realistically yeah, nice real house, where I'm like, oh, yeah. this is, like, this is, like, realistically nice. Like, I understand how much this house cost. And then, yeah, first right. of all, it gets, like, destroyed with a bunch of bullets, and the whole time I'm like, no, this is a nice house. <laughs> and then second of all, he's like he they, that whole scene between uh, Donut Lord and Pretzel Lady because I don't remember their real names because it doesn't matter. But they're like I don't either. 
They're like, oh, we have these plans. Like, you were there when I was in veterinary school. Like, you worked three jobs so that I could be a vet. I'm totally ready to, like, move mm-hmm. for, so that you can fulfill your dream to be a police officer in I a big city where cute. you can, that's like, great. actually do some, like, good that you feel like is important to do. And I'm like, mm-hmm. oh, that's so nice. This is so nice. I'm so happy for these people. And then Sonic yeah. shows up and is like, how dare you leave this small town, you <laughs> asshole? And I'm like, god fucking damn it, Sonic. I don't oh, care that you're man. working through your own baggage. You are being the world's biggest jerk right now and ruining this <laughs> man's life by guilt tripping him about the fact that you don't have a mom or whatever. Like, it's so <laughs> stupid. I So, okay. Oh. Go ahead, Satch. No, no, go ahead. Okay, I was just going to say, I was like, I, I remember that scene very specifically because it's not even like... In all buddy cop movies, there's always a scene where, you know, they're getting closer together and, like, they're almost friends and then something happens that, like, like, oh, now I hate you again. Yeah. Um, and that was supposed to be that scene, I think. Except, like, Donut Lord, Paul Rudd, is like, um, is like, uh, we're, we're kind of, like, getting shot at right now. And Sonic is like, how dare you? And he's like, I don't know what to do about this. <laughs> he's like, kid, we're being shot at. Sorry that I want to move away from my small town. But, like, also... Hey, he's just caught that, off guard. That whole guilt trip doesn't even work. Because Sonic is like, what's more important than being for, there for the people that you care about? But we have not established, like, any relationships in the small town. <laughs> right. There are three right. characters in this movie and no more. So, like, and even... two of them are, are moving with him. Exactly. <laughs> it's like, dog. what's more important than being with the people that you care about? You mean, like, my dog and my wife who would move with me to San Francisco? It's like, <laughs> right. it doesn't even work. Like, even when the townspeople come at the end of the movie, they're like, hey, if you mess with one of us, you mess with all of us. It doesn't even work. <laughs> because we haven't built any relationships with these people other than you telling me oh, that there is a relationship. It doesn't work. Right. The guilt trip doesn't right. work. It's, you know just, it's kind of like this? Asgard is a people, not a place, and you're like, I guess, but like, yeah, like I haven't seen a lot of the people, of the but people. whatever. <laughs> yeah. you, you know what we need for this? What's that? De- definitely need to release the Snyder Cut, I'm thinking. Oh, <laughs> <God>. <laughs> That'll, fix <laughs> That'll fix it. That'll fix it. And that's another thing. There was a movement movement for a brief moment where people saying where people were saying that they should release the J.J. Abrams cut of Rise of Skywalker, and I was like, no, go fuck yourself. This is the J.J. Abrams cut. Yeah, like, yeah this is exactly <laughs> what J.J. Abrams wanted. Yeah, like there's with the whole Snyder cut thing. There's like a really specific reason that it is a movement because yeah. there is a Snyder cut, and Zack Snyder got fucking fired after his daughter killed herself, and people were like yo like we need to stand up for this guy because that was the worst yeah like that's why the snyder cut movement exists but jj abrams just made a bad movie and somehow people are like but uh actually i think probably he would have made a good one if it weren't for the company yeah. Like, yeah, the reason know. that Wasn't this movie, like a... J.J. Abrams is the company. He is the problem that came <laughs> right, in and yeah. ruined it. J.J. Abrams. What are they gonna do? Yeah. <laughs> oh my god. Uh, yeah. I, I think J.J. Abrams is one of the is a person that I would be totally happy to just punch in the face. Like I don't want to kill him or wish any ill towards him, but it's like, do you want to punch him in the face? I'd be like, yeah, just one. Like I don't want to yeah, fight him. Know... I just want to give him a little punch. <laughs> Just, this has been my hot take. take. I want to punch JJ Abrams. I feel like he All deserves right. it. I'm so done with your like hostility towards JJ Abrams, Adeline. The only movies of him you've seen are his two Star Wars movies. And I listen. And you like one of them. I like one of them, but I hate one of them way more than I like the other one. <laughs> All right, you're just very hostile towards J.J. Abrams, and I don't get it. It's because he's a corporate pig, and I hate him. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> All of Hollywood is gonna be put under the chopping block of yeah, <laughs> of the gay one pig punch by me. Right. Okay, so for the people who have not seen Sonic the Hedgehog, mm-hmm. um, this this is how it goes down. Sonic. He's living in Sonic World with the loop-de-loops and such. With a, mm-hmm. his, with a big owl. With his a big mom owl. is an owl. Yes. She dies immediately. You shouldn't ask it's... questions about it. She dies. Yeah, don't ask about it. It's just the Guardians of Gahul. <laughs> it really um, is. But it's Zack Snyder's Guardians of Gahul. Yeah. We should release the Snyder Cut of Guardians of Gahul. Oh, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, is that actually Zack Snyder? Yeah, Zack Snyder directed that movie. Oh, it all comes um, back. It's full circle. <laughs> <laughs> um, anyway, um, 
so she's like, Sonic, these are your rings because of Sonic and there's rings. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it turns out that you can just teleport wherever you want to with these rings. So run away from the bad guys. Because well, there are some of... bad guys that want to kill you because you're... What weirds me out about those bad guys in that first scene is that those are the echidnas that, like, yep. guard the master uh, chaos emerald. emerald. Yep. Like, that's who that is. Which is, like, deep-cut Sonic lore. Because this movie's for the fans. For the fans. But then I'm, I'm not... just mega confused to why they're there. Because that's... And when I saw that, I was like, oh, is this going to have something to do with, like, the tribe of Echidnas and the Master Chaos Emerald? Because, like, oh, that's, like, mm-hmm. actually, like, interesting. But then that's not right. what we do at all. But now I'm just confused. Why are they there? Why did you do that? Because I feel I like think... you're not going to do anything with them. I really want the secret lore in the next movie to just be like, Sonic has stolen the Emerald for his own greedy purposes. And he's well... been the bad guy this whole time. <laughs> well, right. I think what, it, what it'll probably be... It's like, oh, you are the chosen one, and you have the power of the Chaos Emeralds in you, and oh, you have right, to protect yeah. us, or get, or we're mad at you, and we have to suck it out of you, or something like that. <laughs> but anyway, we're getting too hung up on this, because it's one minute, and it's, it's completely th- unimportant. 30 seconds tops. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, Sonic, now he's in real world with people, and if they, if he gets in trouble here... He has to go to Mushroom World, which he doesn't want to do, even Sonic though his rings hates can, mushrooms. Because the Put rings can teleport lines. him wherever he wants. They establish that very clearly. So I don't know why he has to go to Mushroom Land, but whatever. He's got like a whole piece of paper that shows right. all of the safe worlds that he could go to. <laughs> and right. yet he's still well, like, oh, I have to go to Mushroom Land. <laughs> um, or also elsewhere on Earth. Yeah. He clearly knows there's more on Earth. Right. Yeah. Like he. In the in the, when he shows the uh, um, the bucket list, he knows what the Great Wall is at least. That's yeah. like you could teleport right. over there for sure, and then like <laughs> no one would be able to do anything to you. Yeah, if you're in the wilderness of China, I don't think anybody's yeah, gonna find you. The American government is not gonna. Oh man. <laughs> anyway, um, so he's hanging out. He's a secret. He's a secret to everyone. He's mm-hmm. just chilling, and then Doctor Eggman finds out where he is. So he has to make friends with James Marsden. and But then he drops his bag of rings into San Francisco. In the most contrived and stupid <laughs> and slow scene. Oh my yeah. god. Oh my god. He gets he's shot. Because he's like, oh no, I'm in trouble. I gotta go to Mushroom Land. And then he's like, opens the portal to Mushroom Land. And then he's like, oh no, somebody's coming. And then like closes it. Then he like goes somewhere else and is like, okay, time to go to Mushroom Land. And then it's like, oh no, but there's somebody around and it's well, like no, just he fucking gets, go to so mushroom he goes land, in the garage dog. he opens the door he's holding the ring he tranquilizes him he drops the ring he looks at the guy's shirt and goes san francisco <laughs> and then the portal opens on the ground and then sonic walks towards the portal he was standing away from it and he walks towards it and then he goes, oh no, I'm feeling sleepy. And then he, like, purposefully <laughs> drops the bag into the hole and then backs up and then the portal closes and then he says meow or whatever and then he falls unconscious. Uh, so anyway, oh, then after that, um, they go on a road trip and they become close friends and Sonic learns about what's cool about Earth. And there's a bunch of cool robots. And then he gets yep. the rings, but he decides not to leave the end. That's the, the whole, end. that's all that you need to know. And about then he it. lives in the oh, room it... from the Planet of the Apes for the rest of his life. Yeah. <laughs> Very important, though. Um, Dr. Eggman is not Dr. Eggman because he looks like an egg. It's because he just designs all of his robots like eggs in this Fair. movie. And he says the um, word egg sack, and I'm still not okay with that. He does <laughs> say, hey, here's what came out of my egg sack, and I... Hmm. <laughs> and, I and I have a lot of questions, and I don't want answers for any of them. I don't want any of those answers. <laughs> <laughs> but there are so many great Jim Carrey bits in this. There are. The one that oh, gets sure. me really good is the one where he's like walking with his little like secretary subordinate mm-hmm. guy, and he's like, yeah, and he like reaches out for a high five. And then he, like, turns to high-five him, but then, like, swoops underneath him and just punches him right in the sternum. <laughs> you have just have a so good. And he's just like, gotcha! I... And the guy's like, <laughs> and I just think it's so funny. And that whole my, scene where my he's, favorite, like, uh, listening is, to a song um... about how evil he is, like, while, like, doing science and yeah. it's, like, playing with a VR machine. Like, it's just, it's the oh coolest God. thing. 
That part rips. That part rips. It's great. I, I really like when he goes up to his secretary, Twink, um, and uh, tells him to pin himself against the wall. Um, <laughs> yeah, right. It's really funny. That I one mean, really got me. I mean, give me a big, fat break is so funny. <laughs> Anyway, this is our Jim Carrey Stan podcast where we yeah, just list sure. things that we think are funny that Jim Carrey does. Yeah. Oh, man. Exist. Number one. Number one. Uh... And then when he Hold says, on. see, there was... Jackson, this movie is for the fans because Paul Rudd <laughs> says the words Comic Con one time. Right, right, right. But it's right, at right. an insult towards a person, so you unravel that. <laughs> you can take uh, the pieces of that one. Yeah. I'm not gonna. If I if I read a quote from my review that I wrote, will I sound like a douchebag or should no, I just skip it? No, it's fine. No, go okay. for it. Um, sorry, one sec. Okay, well you have to do it quickly. Uh, I said, <laughs> I said, Sonic the Hedgehog feels like a throwback to an earlier time, a time when studios produced star-studded live-action family entertainment designed to be mindlessly watched and rewatched by children on VHS. It seems only fitting that Jim Carrey, the king of VHS himself, is making his blockbuster comeback as Dr. Robotnik. Um, Carrey is back in his purest form in this role. Which I feel like there's a certain genre of, like, Robin Williams, Jim Carrey movies from, yeah. like, 1990 to 2001 that were just, like, they made a million of them and they were just nonsense, but some kid has it on VHS and he's watched it 800 times. Uh, Flubber? Um, can I get a Flubber? Flubber oh, is yeah, a good Flubber. one. Yep. Um, Hook? And, you know, like, The Mask, or, like, yeah. um, what's... What's the one where he's a detective? Um, yeah, Ace oh, Ventura. Oh, Ace Ventura, okay, yeah. It's like, this movie feels like one of those. It's, like, just sort of, like, thoughtless... But still, like, Go competent, I guess, yeah. <laughs> you know? Like, and yeah, what I don't yeah. like about that quote is that it feels like it's shitty on Jim Carrey and saying that Jim Carrey does not have anything to say. And if I know anything about Jim Carrey, it's like, he's got a lot to say. Like, it's his, <laughs> his brand of comedy, like, even if it's out there and kind of wild and stupid, like, he is making decisions in order to get an effect. And I think yeah. the decisions that Jim Carrey makes in just being Jim Carrey in this movie is, like, right. way more art than any other thing in this whole goddamn movie. <laughs> right. Like, the oh, only sure. piece of art is Jim Carrey being Jim Carrey. Like, yeah. There's a certain, there's a certain like, level of Jim Carrey. I think this performance is a lot like him doing the Riddler in Batman Forever. Yeah. In the sense yeah. that, like, it's so huge. And some sometimes... It's really not funny and really embarrassing to watch him. But even still, like, you kind of just admire what he's doing. Yeah, like he's how doing something. That shit the decisions he's making are, you yeah. know? Oh, yeah. I just have so much respect for anybody who, like, makes a decision and does something. Like, like that's what I hate so much about these corporate movies where they're just like, oh, let's get, let's make... Like, let's just do something basic. Let's do a buddy cop movie that as many people will like as possible. And then Jim Carrey's like, I'm just gonna be Jim Carrey. And that's like 100% Jim Carrey and just be crazy right. and weird. And like, that's a choice. That's great. I love that. Like, even when it's not funny, at least you're doing something. Like, please, just do right. anything. Yeah, he, like, he, he, can, he can truly, like, reinvent a character to just be um, this absolutely, like, ridiculous... Like, some... You know, Dr. Doctor Robotnik, Dr. Eggman or whatever, has always been kind of, like, a sillier character. Yeah, absolutely. Um, uh, but definitely not, like, a slapstick one, usually. Right. Um, and I, uh, unless you count, like, the, the Sonic Boom series or whatever, I don't know, they do some funky stuff in that one. Um, but, like, in, like, Jim Carrey definitely just takes it, and he's, like, and he's just, you know, he's just having fun, and he makes these really bold decisions that completely changes how you view the character, because he's completely in it. And you're like, that's that's Doctor Robotnik now, you know? Yeah. Like, there's mm. no there's no going back. Um, I don't not, know. Not uh, to just continue. He, he just has that power. You yeah. Know? Not to just continue about how great Jim Carrey is, but like the series of unfortunate <laughs> events movie, him as oh, Count yeah. Olaf yeah. is just like mm -hmm. also amazing. not a great movie. Best part of it. 
Um, mm, excuse mm, you. Mm, mm, disagree. Hard excuse disagree. you. Really interesting. Excuse I you. I was not a fan. You have stumbled into a hostile work environment. <laughs> I, I'm sorry. <laughs> I have br- I brought up something that I was like, this is something that will be non-committal and easily agreeable. <laughs> and I am sorry. Something for the whole a, family. <laughs> Look, that movie's shot by Emmanuel Lubetsky. It's great. It's got uh, the craziest score. It's so good. Jim Carrey as Count Olaf is doing so much. If you want to say that the history. kid's acting is bad, I would agree with you. But every other part of that movie is fantastic. Meryl Streep I is just, in it. I'm, I'm very critical against things where I've very enjoyed the books. That's um, fair. And they, they change things. And uh, as a fan, <laughs> I'm entitled to get what I want. So, That's you true. Know, it's not catch. really for the fans. Series of Unfortunate Events. Yeah, they didn't no. make it for the fans. That's true. It's not like that. <laughs> Guess not. Huh? <laughs> um, um. <laughs> yeah, I mean, look, the thing about this movie, I mean, look, I, I was much more receptive to this movie the second time I was watching it. Because the last movie we watched for this podcast was Scoob, which is, like, the (laughs) most depressing, soulless, like, just black hole of a movie that I was, like, so, so upset by. Of just how absolutely deeply cynical and corporate it is. Yeah. We did get some very good gifts of um, just some dude saying the word dick over and over and over again, which was fun. fun. But, you know... But, like, even <laughs> when I came out of this movie the first time, I was like, I don't know, it feels pretty corporate, but this time I was like, oh, it's beautiful. This the whole movie, this whole movie, like, feels like the third act of Toy Story 3 compared to Scoop. Because <laughs> I'm crying the whole time. <laughs> it feels like, like it's just, just overflowing with hearts. <laughs> <laughs> I think oh, saying man. that Sonic the Hedgehog is better than, than Scoob is just a testament to how absolutely terrible Scoob is. Like, yeah. <laughs> seeing this movie for the first time and not, like, having the chance to, like, think about it on a second viewing, mm. like, it's just... It's just nothing. It doesn't like we've we've already said it. It has no heart. It's so corporate. It's not a Sonic movie. Anything that they do is that is kind of cool is completely undercut by Sonic flossing or making a shitting his pants joke <laughs> or just not being Sonic and being annoying. Like it just mm. they just like ruin it for themselves, which is just so interesting. Like yeah. that whole scene where that song kicks up in slow motion in the bar and he starts, like, fooling around with everybody. Like, Mm. Jackson saw me, like, physically put my head down on the couch. Like, I was just like, (laughs) oh my god. (laughs) I don't want to watch this whole scene. But then the payoff of that gag is good. But then we immediately just, like, get in the car again. And it's like... Was it X-Men First Class that did it? Yeah. Yeah. Literally the best and everyone else has been trailing behind. Yeah. Well, that's the thing. I, w- I wish I could uh, cite this person, but somebody wrote an article after this movie came out about how we have been totally locked into this same visual language of, like, super fast characters for the last few years. Mm-hmm. Because yeah. they do it three different goddamn times in the X-Men movies. Yeah. And they're all really? exactly the same. No, yeah, um, they have exactly the same fucking sequence in Days of Future Past and Apocalypse and damn. Dark Phoenix. That's upsetting um, because the the like sweet dreams are made of these it, it like that whole scene is just so goddamn cool. That's a it shame is. that like they could bring it back. Right. You know. Or like they'd have to, you know, reuse it basically. So yeah. Right. Um, um but then, you know, they do that in Justice League with the Flash. We'll see about the Snyder cut. Uh-huh. But in the Joss Whedon cut, it's the yeah, same probably sort of two thing. of them in that one. <laughs> everything's slow. Everything's slow motion, and he's moving around. Moving That's stuff. why it's five hours long. It's, yeah, it's just the Snyder cut is just the entire movie from Flash's perspective. <laughs> yeah, right. where everyone's talking really, really slow. <laughs> <laughs> but but now Sonic like the Hedgehog is doing the same thing. If somebody was pointing yeah. out, like, we need to come up with like a new visual language for like super for fast characters fast. because yeah. this is one out nice. now. Yeah. Yeah, and it's like, oh, I'm gonna, like, they do it in freaking Over the Hedge, like, when they, like, yeah, set up a too. trap it's so like that sh- when time freezes so that they can, like, trap the bad people and stuff, and Sonic literally does that in this movie, and it's just, I've seen, I've seen it before, I know your tricks, it's not, it's not entertaining. <laughs> That was before Days of Future Past, even. Oh, they stole it from Over the Hedge. I I can't believe 
<laughs> I can't believe Days of Future Past stole the uh so from over the head <laughs> yeah. where the squirrel played by Steve Carell drinks a coffee and freaks out. Oh, that is Steve right. Carell, isn't it? Hey, Over the Hedge is great. I stand by that movie. <laughs> Have you seen I... it lately? No. <laughs> <laughs> I blindly stand up for this movie that I watched maybe 1,200 times in the car as a 12-year-old. Right, right, right. Yeah, yeah. All I know is that I they have, have the Ben Folds thing. rock in the suburbs in it, and it rocks. Right, right, right. But, like, well, Ben Folds wrote, like, version. four songs for that movie. Yeah, because it's Damn. the best movie. And there's a big bear, and the raccoon has to get food for the bear, and he tricks yeah, all his friends. that raccoon played by Bruce Willis yeah. in a weird against-type yeah. performance. Jackson, Over the Hedge is great. I don't know how you Bruce don't get Willis? this. Yeah, Bruce Willis is the raccoon. It's a you've super got, weird You've got choice. the teen girl That's possum whack. who doesn't want to be a coward like her dad, but then she <laughs> uses that cowardice to protect herself and her friends. It's great. And Eugene Levy and Catherine O'Hara are the possums, I think. No, they're hedgehogs. Great. Because for some reason, Eugene Levy and Catherine O'Hara played married couples, like, exclusively. Exactly. No, they're porcupines. <laughs> they're the por- with the three porcupine kids. Who plays the turtle? Uh, oh, Gary Shandling. Yeah. Damn, they got these answers immediately. It's insane. <laughs> Jackson goes. Because <laughs> he secretly um, loves Over the Hedge. He's going to pretend like it's a bad yeah. movie. <laughs> it's going um, to uh, log off the podcast and be like, they'll never know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Um, oh, also, we should have brought this up at the beginning. I forgot. Mm. I just want to draw attention to the big, dramatic, legacy Sega logo at the beginning <laughs> of this movie. Oh, my God. Yeah. As if they're trying to, like, set up a production studio for when they put the green light on the Super Monkey Ball movie or something. <laughs> like, Well, it's, they do that with, like, all those shots of, like, all those video games that are all literally from the 90s. Like, it's... <laughs> I don't know what they're trying to prove. Like, Sega, you have not been relevant in a while. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they're look. like we we used to make good things i swear <laughs> look at super monkey Remember. ball <laughs> to play devil's advocate you could you could absolutely make a uh jet set radio movie oh you for could sure. absolutely but it would be a, a, it would be a buddy cop where um yeah. jet comes <laughs> <Right>. into the... <laughs> <laughs> and there's a government agent yeah <laughs> is that is that it played but that's jet set radio i know nothing about jet set radio um i'm looking at um the sega website just to take a look at some of the games they have okay um bayonetta is sega i didn't know bayonetta was sega oh, oh sega owns like a bunch of stuff um, like it owns the company of the band at Platinum Games or whatever that's Sega. Right, okay. S- something else is Sega too that's like also popular. I don't remember. Um, how about like Football Mega Manager? Corp. You can make a pretty uh, good Football Manager movie. Yeah, we haven't seen any football movies uh, yet, so that would be that would be interesting for yeah, sure. Yeah, I've never seen a football movie. Okay, I recognize Alien Isolation and Bayonetta and Yakuza. Wait, Jackson, what's that, the what's nothing. the game with the fish with a face that you had to take care of? Oh, Seaman? Seaman. That wasn't Sega. That was just a game on the Dreamcast. Wait, who made that? I don't know, somebody. (laughs) Did that just appear from the (laughs) ether and we all just agreed on it? That it existed? (laughs) Let me see. Like, you guys remember Seaman, right? And I'm like, uh, sure, right. (laughs) And you stop talking about it if I do. (laughs) (laughs) Wait, can I end this conversation earlier? (laughs) (laughs) Apparently they were trying to port it. I just looked at the Wikipedia page. Apparently they were trying to port it to the 3DS for a while, but they shut that shit down. Oh, thank God. Damn. Oh, God, if they were like, today, C-Man, on the Switch, I would throw my Switch in the toilet. <laughs> I feel like I no longer want this. This is a cursed it's, object now. It's soiled every other game I have I'm on I'm sorry, here. I'm sorry, Tom Nook, I can't live on this island anymore. <laughs> um, anyway... So, okay, the last thing I want to say about Sonic the Hedgehog, at least the last, like, prepared thing that I wanted to make a note of, yes. sure. is that um, Jeff Fowler, the guy who directed it, is an animator. He directed a short film that got nominated for Best Animated Short in, like, 2005. Why does this movie oh, do you know what it was, actually? Because like I watched a bunch of those. It was um, something about a gopher. Um, All right, maybe not. Hold All right, on. I'll look it up later. Sorry, I don't yeah. want to distract. It was like a computer animated short film in like 2004, back when that didn't really have a stink on it. Yeah. Um, 
and uh but anyway he is like an animation guy and he doesn't have a lot of like big credits but he just you know he's kind of a journeyman he just goes around and works on stuff yeah oh, he earns a paycheck, you know um but he landed this gig he directed sonic the hedgehog um which i think is fascinating because there are times when sort of his animation background really comes through i think that the <laughs> use of color in like the third act of this movie especially is really deliberate and really effective and I think that just in terms of storyboarding, every time there's like a big like action sequence, it's really, really well put together and clear and like engaging, you know, mm -hmm. oh, which yeah. is like a hallmark of, of, you know, having to do animation. And um, I, I just think that's interesting because it also becomes clear that when it comes to just like directing two actors, having a conversation, he doesn't quite, know how to make that interesting yeah <laughs> you know yeah and i i will say the like real green hill zone they show in the beginning looks is great. like stunning that shit yeah. looks good yeah it does why the fuck but... did they not just make an animated sonic movie why didn't they just do <laughs> yeah, that why did it have to be live action they know. keep fucking bringing guns into the <laughs> sonic universe and every time they do it, it's bad. And they haven't learned their oh. lesson yet. And I'm ready for them to learn it. Like, oh, Shadow God. the Hedgehog has a gun, and it's bad. Like, it just... God, next movie, if he shows up with his pump-action machine gun. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, why didn't they just make an animated Sonic movie? Like, I feel like you would immediately get the family and kid viewers because it's an animated movie. So you're just automatically going to make $10 million because kids are going to see it. And it, like, you could have done stuff with the whole Sonic gang, and we would, and it would have been fun. You could have done like you didn't even have to do like a Sonic plot. You could have done anything, and it wouldn't. It would be more like a Sonic movie than this is. Like, right? Like, like CGI animated big family mm. movies are so huge right now. Why didn't they just do that? Like that. That's so <laughs> weird. <laughs> I, like, I have stop heard putting that, Sonic like, in a human just... world. It always looks terrible. I don't want to see Sonic the Hedgehog <laughs> next to a human person. It's disgusting every time, and I hate it. <laughs> God, just flashbacks to Sonic kissing a real kissing human woman a on real the mouth. Human <laughs> woman. Um, no, but I have heard that like animated movies, for whatever reason, just do not make the the same kind of money and that's depressing because i really like well, watching good animated movies well here's the thing is that it kind of depends um stuff like a finding dory which or an incredibles 2 which are yeah, i think I'm, the two right. highest grossing are like in the top 10 highest grossing movies of all time if yeah. you get oh. a if you get a really well performing animated movie it'll make absolute bank even things like but the thing about animated movies is that their floor for how badly they can do is pretty high. Like, even something like Secret Life of Pets 2, which came out last year, that mm. nobody cared about and nobody really saw. Except for every just, child. By virtue planet. of it being a kid's movie, it still made, like, probably $200 million, which is, like, Damn. pretty solid. Well, you know? like, I did, that's research that's about, <laughs> yeah. I did research about Pixar and DreamWorks a while ago, but, like, the lowest grace grossing movie from Pixar is A Bug's Life, and that thing still made bank like ridiculous amounts of money yeah. the lowest grossing was a bug's life yeah that makes me mad i loved a bug's well, the life. lowest grossing dreamworks movie was road to el dorado so damn that's also sad yeah but yeah but it's it's just a weird thing because it okay. also you know animated movies aren't just aren't necessarily i don't know it's, it's a weirdly different landscape because yeah. one of the things that i was really surprised by was that as of right now uh, Into the Spider Verse is the lowest grossing Spider Man movie ever. Um, that that doesn't seem right. Yeah, but it's I a it's a weird you. one. I yeah. mean, not that it didn't yeah. make bank. It's just that every right, Spider Man sure. movie always makes bank. Also made bank. Um, <laughs> but oh man, so, Into the Spider Verse was so good. So good. Yeah, and like, but it just there's a different sort of audience for. Um, for animated movies than there are like big blockbusters if you are gonna make mm -hmm. an animated movie that's gonna go gangbusters you've got to really make sure that you're drawing in an adult audience you know mm -hmm. yeah, which not every that's... movie always does yeah because just by like the virtue of it being animated there is kind of a stigma for like oh that's probably just for children you mm -hmm. know <laughs> right 
So, um, do you guys want to hear? They did a a smattering of posters that were sort of Valentine's Day themed for Sonic the Hedgehog. Oh God! Did they? Um, how would you like to hear the taglines on these? Okay. Very much. Okay, so this one has a picture of Dr. Eggman on it, and it says, Roses are red, violets are blue. You better watch out, I'm gonna catch you. Okay. So that's a very good one. Uh, uh, this one has a picture of Sonic, and it says, To Robotnik from Sonic, like it's a valentine. Yeah. And it says, Hate you, mean it. What? That's just mean. <laughs> that's That's upsetting. This one has a picture of Sonic on it. It says, Roses are red, hedgehogs are blue, Robotnik's a butthead, and he knows it, too. This is just cyberbullying. Okay. <laughs> I... So that's really good. God. And my favorite is, uh, Spend this V-Day with your number one frenemy. And it has Sonic and Robotnik on it, and it says, Best frenemies forever. They're just God. trying to get They're... you to ship them, and that's what I mean. <laughs> Which <then. laughs> I find to be, like, deeply inaccurate. Yeah, <laughs> they are not I, well, I, I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna ask you guys a question. Okay. You know, <laughs> it's time to get real. You know, we've okay. had a lot of fun here. Okay. Um, uh, if Dr. Robotnik, um, you know, cleaned himself up, wore a nice suit, uh, do you think people would want to fuck him? Because oh, people I already want to think... fuck him. People already want to fuck him. People are fucking him already. No, yeah, people want to fuck him because he can't get it in this movie. I can't confirm that he can't get it in this movie. Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. Because, like, in this movie, they've, like, shown, like, a new light, and now he's, like, become, you know, he's, like, Jim Carrey, and, you know, he's the skinny white boy, so that, like, <laughs> yeah, you know, that's a big plus for him. And I was like, maybe, you know what? Well, how many egg fuckers there are? There's a lot. <laughs> so... There's a lot of egg fuckers. <laughs> Good. Okay, Good. I I was not aware. But see, um, what but... I'm happy about, I have not seen any Sonic fuckers, and that was what I was afraid of because yeah. of the weird sexual connotation that has been thrust upon Sonic somehow for some reason. I don't know yeah. how it happened, but there at least a... <laughs> him being twelve and animated horribly made nobody want to fuck him, and I'm grateful for that. <laughs> you know what? God bless. I I, I uh, um I. I will say the movie did put a lot of plot emphasis on his feet. Um, they they true. showed his feet Very a lot. True. They really yeah. did. <laughs> that was <laughs> one of the most upsetting things about this movie to me. I think. <laughs> yeah. Oh man. When they like, it's like a like I wanted there to be a line when he wakes up after being exploded. And he's like, did, mm -hmm. did you guys take my shoes off? Like, because they just, like, <laughs> that's, cool. <laughs> that's gross, dude. <laughs> that's no good. <laughs> that, that makes me uncomfortable. <laughs> and oh, they make man. a huge point of him getting, like, the red shoes. But how he right. gets them, I gotta say, doesn't make any sense. Why does yeah, this Yeah, the girl, girl just had Sonic-sized red shoes See, what around. they should have done right. is they should have had, like, one passing line of dialogue where they're like, oh, she is a track runner. That's what she does for fun. So that when she sees that his shoes are all run out, she's like, oh, I have my running shoes. And then she goes right. and gets them. That would make sense. But instead, she just comes downstairs with these shoes meant for a hedgehog. <laughs> That she has. <laughs> right. And she hands them to him. She's like, oh yeah, when I was a hedgehog, I had these shoes. But yeah. they don't fit me anymore because I'm a human. So, here you go. Everybody said that I was stupid for buying these hedgehog shoes. But now I'll show them. <laughs> <laughs> They're meant to be with you, Sonic. I gotta say, I love that joke. Where she's running around and she's saying, gotta go fast, go, gotta go fast. And the ant's like, put on my Fitbit, at least. Like, that's funny. I like that joke. <laughs> that's a good one. It's like the one joke I, that lands I, properly. That aunt is still there. Yeah. They're like, we're never going back. That girl's not gonna <laughs> tie her mom. What's up with the character of the sister-in-law that just wants you to get divorced so bad? Because I feel <clears> like <throat> I've seen that in places several times and i don't know what yeah. it comes from and it's always annoying i just want to know where they got that <laughs> it, it's always the 
Yeah, it's the um, it's the kind of like, oh, independent woman doesn't like when like another woman is you know in a With relationship, a yeah. right? Um, and it's like I don't know if that's how it works always. Yeah. Um, <laughs> well, because like, I think makes... you could separate that one a bit, Hollywood. Well, it could have been um, like, oh, she doesn't really like me all that much. I'm like, oh, that's realistic. And then yeah. when he gets charged with terrorism, then she's like, fuck you. That would have been good. But she's just, like, always at a 10 the whole movie. And yep. there's no reason for her to be at a 10. Because he's, <laughs> yeah. like, a, a sheriff from a small town who, like, loves baby animals and helps ducks across the street. And she's like, fuck this yeah, guy. No, he, it's like, why? He's literally, like, the perfect guy. Yeah. And he right, goes, yeah. like... He goes like, hey, have fun um, with your sister. You know, I'm totally in love with you. And, like, everything is going great. And this, uh, I worked you know, three jobs to put you through veterinary um, school. Yeah, and then her sister is like, get a divorce, yeah. idiot. What are you doing? It's like, Jesus. Oh, okay. Uh, <laughs> Maddie, Maddie, I have a gun in the garage. I'll keep him distracted. <laughs> <laughs> She's just always at a 10 for the whole movie, and I don't understand. Yeah. Oh my I want God. some, like, deep lore where he, like, killed her dog or something. Yeah, I want the... Yeah, I want yeah, some explanation. Sure. Like you. Oh, also, just... I forgot to mention this. We gotta bring up the Sonic Legs poster. Where it looks like he's just like nutting all over the Golden Gate Bridge. Yeah. Yes. Uh-huh. All right. That's that's what I meant by the Sonic crotch shot pick. <laughs> right. Um, yeah. Um, it's, what was up with that? Uh, <laughs> uh, they were like they were like you know what would be cool we're just gonna show Sonic maxing relaxing on a place that like normal people can't get to but then they put the <laughs> camera too low and now it's weird and it looks like what guys send to girls before they send something else you know <laughs> it's just... so, like here's the prelude but then there's like this like streak that's like presumably like where he ran. Yeah. Right. Like going all over the Golden Gate Bridge, but it looks like he just like <laughs> Yeah. Just J-O'd onto the Golden Gate Bridge. <laughs> because he's that's my cum. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta come fast. <laughs> <laughs> Enjoy that, San Francisco. <laughs> anyway, I ate a chili dog and I shit myself. Anyway, <laughs> I better I check ate... my fur after that one. <laughs> I ate a chili dog. My cum tastes very bad. <laughs> Jackson, I'm kicking you off of the podcast. <laughs> to the Adeline show. That was, uh, that's it. That was wild. no one else. This is no nerds allowed. Starring Adeline and only Adeline. <laughs> that's fair. <laughs> what happened to Jackson? Oh, he wouldn't stop about what Sonic's cum tasted like after he ate a chili dog, so I murdered him. <laughs> yeah, I'm really glad no one's uh, sexualizing Sonic. Also, Sonic's cum. <laughs> <laughs> I bet it tastes bad. <laughs> it tastes bad. <laughs> At least I didn't say it tasted good. <laughs> you, you know what? <laughs> You're right. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, you want to know another moment that's for the fans? Yeah. When that guy is like, oh, I believe in Sonic, and he shows that meme drawing. Yeah. yeah. Oh my god, that yeah. That's, the that's for the fans. That was for the fans. <laughs> They're like, get fans it? Will... We're bad. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny. <laughs> Sand. Oh, <man>. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> do, uh, do we have any final thoughts on Sonic the Hedgehog? Why do um, you feel bad? I... I mean, despite all of it, I think I liked it, unfortunately. Yeah. Um, I think I do have to go down in history saying that I enjoyed the Sonic movie to an extent. I think that's um, a good quote, though. I liked it, unfortunately. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Unfortunately, I liked it. It's pretty good. <laughs> yeah. Like, I can recognize this. Like, that's eh, not the best movie. But also, sometimes funny headshot go, ha ha. You know? <laughs> sometimes I get to see his feet. And you know what? That's all I needed. Yeah. <laughs> oh man, that's yeah. my final thoughts. I think, uh, I think my final thoughts are: it's not a Sonic movie, and if it wasn't a Sonic movie, it's an okay movie. <laughs> All right. I fair. mean, I just I feel like, you know, did either of you guys see Bumblebee last year? I did not. I I didn't. I've heard it was good though. I yeah, that's a version of like almost this exact same plot structure. Where really? it's like, oh, Bumblebee shows up on Earth, and then Haley Steinfeld finds him, but John Cena is the government bad guy who wants to take him down. They John have to hide Cena's him, but then that they movie? grow as friends. And you know, it is. Do the is it a buddy cop as well? 
it's not a buddy cop. She's okay. just a she's just like a teen girl, and he's a big gotcha. robot. But I was gonna like, say it would be very interesting to have the car riding scene in like the buddy cop movie, but that the right. car is the other cop. You yeah. know? Right. And it's interesting. These two movies are really similar in a lot of different ways because Travis Knight directed Bumblebee, who's another animation mm-hmm. guy. So these are both like big property gotcha. reboots directed by animation professionals, in which it's basically ET. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. But like, and you know, I don't think I don't think Bumblebee is really exceptional either. But it's definitely a lot better than Sonic the Hedgehog is, just because it's it feels a little like it has more heart. It feels a little bit more well written. Mm-hmm. It feels a little bit more like understanding that the plot structure they're working in is really simple. So they like go out of their way to spice things up a little okay. bit more, you know? Yeah. Um, and I just think it's. They're really interesting movies to compare. Cool. Yeah. I yeah. would love to, but I haven't seen one of them, so... <laughs> right, okay. Yeah. I guess the yeah, Bumblebee to, was good. I'll have to watch it now. I have the inside info. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so, if we're ready to wrap it up, do you guys want to hear a five-star review of Sonic the Hedgehog? Oh, do I ever? I would love to. Uh, this review is from Letterboxd.com. They gave it five stars, and they say... If you rate this movie less than four stars, you're an idiot. Is that... Is that it? Is that, that's it. That's... Okay, cool. Well, I just like that they rated it five stars, and they were like, look, I can entertain an argument for four, okay? Like, I would understand <laughs> four. Look, that's I true. get it. It's not that good. <laughs> but... I mean, I thought it was that good. But, like, other people? <laughs> Come on. Anyway, Come my name's Jackson McMurray. My name is Helen McMurray. Uh, and I'm Satchel McMurray. Uh, I've joined the family. Uh, it's too late. <laughs> Welcome. And I'm this Satchel. is No Nerds Allowed. Thank there you. are no nerds allowed, so we're nope. all in danger at this point. Just, I love that. All right. <laughs> we deserve four stars. <laughs> you didn't like you it? Didn't no. I understand it. I just don't think you understood what this movie was really It was you know? for the it was for the fans. Obviously you are one. We're just uneducated. <laughs> <laughs>